Alors, dans le Danemark, qui est au milieu de la Scandinavie, il faut comprendre ce qui se passe. Et pour ça, on va demander à un consultant. C'est Morten Moskov qui, est, qui fait beaucoup de choses. Il est copropriétaire notamment de Slava Ukraini, vous l'avez vu, qui a remporté le derby danois, représentant d'Arcana pour toute la Scandinavie. Donc un très bon connaisseur de la situation. Morten, can you explain to the French public the situation, the general situation of the breeding in Danemark or in plus globally in Scandinavia? Well, totally in Scandinavia, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, we breed about 450-500 horses per year. In all the three countries? In all the three countries. It's, it's not, not a lot. It's not a lot. It used to be twice as much ah, yes. 20 years ago. Uh, it's gone down. People are buying more horses abroad. But we are coming a little bit up again now. It's getting more popular now again because we have better results, we have better blood. Now we have bred a horse that won in Dubai by our pedometer, Danish bred horse, good fortune, Theo Bachelor rode yeah. him. Uh, it shows that we can breed horses, so, so the numbers I think gradually picking up a little bit again. But why it came down? I think mostly because people wanted to buy horses abroad, the, the races were opened for more uh, import horses. Uh, And it's fashionable, I guess, to buy horses abroad. There was more money coming into the sport, richer people buying better horses, more quality. But they have... Uh, they have seen now that they pay a little bit too much compared to Scandinavia, so you get more value for money. Mm. And this is especially because of the breeder systems mm -hmm. that we have in Scandinavia, where you can enter your sire, uh, and if your offspring is by this <laughs> You are eligible to be in the Breeders' Cup races we have in Norway, Sweden and Denmark. And they are very rich, like now, the 10th of September. Slava Ukraine is going to run in the uh, Breeders' Trophy Classic in Bro Park in Stockholm. And there's approximately 220,000 euros to the winner. What is the average price for a winner of a handicap? I would say around 4-5,000 euros, sometimes a little bit more. I heard that it's much better for the general race than England. I think the average price money in Scandinavia is higher than in, in, in England, for sure. Uh, so it has gone the right way. Sweden is the rich brother. They have the good told, ATG. They are uh, a rich jockey club. They uh, have more money in the races than we have in Denmark and in Norway. Not much, but a little bit mm. more. Scandinavia is one racing circuit, so the trainers, they race in Scandinavia in general, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, so one day in Denmark, next day in Sweden. Mm -hmm. So we are one big racing family, uh, and we uh, are, I think, on the, on, on the side where we see some progress. Totally, in Scandinavia, there will be about 1,500 horses in training. Again, it's half of what it was 20 years ago. But why, again, why it was that high? There is a long history about racing in uh, Scandinavia, isn't it? Yes. I mean, Gallo has had a, a, a culture for, for two, three hundred years in Scandinavia, but it's always been the, the small brother of the trotting. So the trotting has always been bigger in, in, in Scandinavia. Sweden, as you know, is one of the powers, power, power countries of, of trotting internationally. Uh, but Gallo has always been there. There's always been a clientele for Gallo. Mm -hmm. But we, I think the, the horse politicians in the Scandinavian countries need to do a better job. And I think they are getting there now. We are trying to gather Scandinavian Gallo as one unit. It has been like the Norwegian Jockey Club, the Swedish Jockey Club, the Danish Jockey Club, not always working well together. Mm -hmm. And we are, when you are small, you have to work together. And I think we are getting there now. Uh, so there is good progress in trying to gather one, to gather all the three countries into one unit. And it's quite new, the reunification? Yes, well, the, the thought about it and the dream that we could do it, it has been there for a long time. <laughs> but it hasn't been easy. Uh, but now we are getting there, I think. There are new people, uh, horse politicians, in each of the three countries. And we all know that this is what we have to do. So if you ask the trainers, you ask the owners, they say, why haven't you done this a long time ago? But if you ask the politicians, they are, oh, we want to keep it for ourselves, and, mm. you know, like this. So I think in general, it, it's looking brighter than ever. And it's uh, work for the horse organization. Um, does it work also for the betting system? Well, the betting system, it, it has been told in general. And I think this is also part of the, 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 the decrease we had, because in the old days, 
When you lived in Norway, you can only put money on Norwegian trotting in Gallo. Same in Sweden, same in Denmark. But but as you know, with the with the international development, internet, all this, people can put their money on France in France racing or in, in Japanese racing mm. in Hong mm. Kong. So that was also a little bit of a problem. But RTG in Sweden is very strong. The Norwegian tot is quite strong. The Danish tot was more or less taken over by the government. Uh, and uh, Dam Toto, which was the Danish tot, is now the, 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 the part of the, the, the government lottery system and uh, football betting and all that. But now the trotting and the galore in Denmark has a cooperation with the Swedish trotting, which is then again part of ATG. Ah. So it is, uh, things are happening underneath, uh, on the political side and on the tot side, which gives us a bright future, I think. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup.